Today, on the 16th part of Gog and Magog, we are going to focus on something special. Yes, it is a data that was still needed to be shown. What do the Jews believe referring to Gog and Magog? Stay alert because once more you will see that there is a certain parallelism, to put it mildly, between what the pioneer Adventists believed and what the Jews still believe today. Today will not be the only day that we will show this. We will continue showing more on what the Jews have said on this topic. Pay attention, it is worth it. We will begin, first of all, talking directly about Jewish belief and Gog and Magog. But before that, we'll see this. It is the last point of what we are going to see, of the most remarkable points that we found in the page of the writings of the Adventist pioneers that were talking precisely about Gog and Magog. In this point, the 157, it is an Adventist publication that, as you can see, is of the year 1844, on October the 9th. It is on page 79, paragraph 2, in the publication of the Advent Herald and Signs of the Times Reporter. It is interesting already the name that they use for these publications. The Advent Herald and the Signs of the Times, in the format of a report. This is very interesting because it shows us how the people that were the Adventist pioneers were fully looking at their time, seeing if the prophecies were being fulfilled. And evidently, they must have known which prophecies and what were they supposed to say. See how they speak of them and of what in this paragraph. October the 9th, 1844, Volume 8, Number 10, Boston, Whole number 180. Joshua V. Himes, who was precisely the editor. And look at the subtitles. The Advent Herald and Signs of the Times Reporter. Behold, the Bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. It is really impressive, eh? Now, I ask myself, is the Adventist people as attentive to the signs as they were and know how to recognize them and fit them in? And some will say, yes, but they were wrong. Well, they were mistaken by applying some things at their time. But we have already seen how things repeat themselves. And now they are coming back. And here it continues saying, the Feast of Tabernacles. This was instituted in commemoration of the booths in which the Israelites sojourned on their departure from Egypt see Leviticus 23 verse 43 and it was observed on the 15th day of the seventh month at the end of the vintage and in gathering of fruits as the wheat harvest is typical of the resurrection of the righteous so must the vintage be typical of the destruction of the wicked and we read in Revelation 14 verses 18 to 20 that another angel thrust in his sickle and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the grain winepress of the wrath of God. And our Saviour will tread the winepress alone and trample the wicked in his fury. See Isaiah 63 verse 3. According to Dr. Hales, the Jews have a tradition that the grand defeat of Gog and Magog will be accomplished in this month. How interesting, eh? And look, the 9th of October of 1844, they wrote this. And what did they believe was going to happen on the 22nd of October of 1844? The second coming of Christ, meaning that Gog and Magog must be consummated. Yes, not only they were applying this for after the millennium, they were applying it also precisely for the moments before the second coming of Christ. And this is what we must have more than clear in our mind. One, literal for now, for the moments before the second coming of Christ, and another one, after the millennium, with the symbology of what is going to happen in little time. And once this is said, well, the Adventists, 
already have this parked on one side and buried. In those times they had it very clear. Evidently Christ did not come in those times, but what did they know? They knew a tradition of the Jews that around the Feast of Tabernacles is when there is the defeat of Gog and Magog. When will Christ come back? In the Feast of Tabernacles. Therefore, what is there to be at that moment? Gog and Magog. The final consummation. Armageddon. How interesting to see that they had some concepts that were very well defined. Only that, unfortunately, I would ask, unfortunately? No, because God wanted it like that. They were mistaken on the moment of the returning of Christ. There were still some years to fulfill the 6,000 years of sin, because they were basing themselves on this also. All of this we must know it already, and if you do not know what I am talking about, look at all the conferences that we have presented about is there a date for the returning of Christ? And so many others about the 6,000 years and all of them referring to the returning of Jesus. In these conferences it is all very well explained and the signs of the returning of Christ are practically in our days, few years from the moment of 2031. But evidently something must happen before that. And now once we have seen this we must clear out also that what happened in that moment that Christ went from the holy place to the most holy place. It was the end of the prophecy of the 2300 prophetic days, meaning years, that ended in that moment. They were wrong, yes, but God allowed it to see who was truly for the coming of Christ and who was not, who accepted that message in that moment and who couldn't care less. And it served also to see who of those that had that great disappointment were there by faith and continued investigating despite the ridicule of the rest of the world. And who of them were there just because of fear of? Well, once more, these things we must know them. But now here what we are most interested in is this, what the Jews believed in, what they believe that Gog and Magog will be fulfilled in the Feast of Tabernacles. Therefore, there we have a parameter. And now we are going to go directly to a series of articles that will talk to us about Gog and Magog in a Jewish manner. Here it says Sukkot 5676. This is meaning the Feast of Tabernacles of year 5776 for them. This writing was of the year 2015. Practically seven years have passed from that moment. We already know that they are mistaken on the calculation of the years. We have already explained this in the conferences. There isn't so many years until the 6,000 as they believe it. We are practically nine years away and reducing very quickly. See what they say here. News with a prophetic touch. The beginning of Gog and Magog in the year 5,776. See the map also because it is interesting after we have seen of what people the nation of Magog is, at least in general, you can see the map quite clearly, right? Well, keep this present because things will go more or less practically like this. Well, let's take a look. It says, has the time come? Remember that this is written in the year 2015. It explains a bit about history. But we are going to go to the parts that we are interested in, which is this one. The popular rabbi Yosef Mizrahi makes a number of connections between this year's Sukkot feast, 5776, and world events, and considers all the events sparked by this latest blood moon and the Sukkot party. They are preparing the fulfillment of the prophecy of Gog and Magog. You can find Rabbi Yosef's interview at the following link, and then it continues. As we had commented in the previous article, and attention to what it says here, the numerical value of the Hebrew word Gog, Umagog, is 70. Know that the letters in Hebrew also have numerical values. Well, it comes out that this has a value of 70. According to Mizrahi, 
This is an allusion to the 70 nations that make up the world. When the Holy Temple was in Jerusalem, 70 oxen were slaughtered during the week of Sukkot, Bamidbar, Numbers 29 verses 14 to 36. Each of these 70 oxen represented one of the 70 nations of the world. Curious, right, these concepts? On the other hand, the Shabbat that falls during the week of Sukkot, meaning the, the Saturday that falls on the week of Tabernacles, the section of the books of the prophets that are read in synagogues throughout the world comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 18, and onwards until chapter 39, verse 16. This passage speaks precisely of the war of Gog and Magog, which is anticipated to come before Israel's final redemption. How interesting! So precisely in the Feast of Tabernacles, they read, and also precisely on a Saturday, the war of Gog and Magog. Mizrahi puts these pieces together and emphasizes that, based on the mystical tradition of Judaism, the Kabbalah, the rabbis of the Talmud understand that the time that has the greatest chance of having this war is Sukkot, and especially this year, for it is about the end of the Shemitah. Although some people agree that in reality this does not correspond to the year according to the latest archaeological discoveries. Well, as you can see, this is where they were in those years 2015. On the other hand, Mizrahi also comments that the Gemara, the Talmudic commentary on the Torah, says that at the end of Shvijit, the seventh year, which is a Shemite year, that is a sabbatical year, Mashiach ben David, the Messiah, son of David, is yet to come. Finally, he is teaching that all the signs that were given in the Talmud to recognize the arrival times of the Messiah have already been given. Yes, they were applying all of this already in the year 2015. And how interesting, a Shemite year, which is a sabbatical year, remember also that Sem, Shem, also has something to do with Saturday. Curious to see how it is always linked to God's people. These are things that make you think. One thing is for sure, we have never been in a scenario so similar to the circumstances narrated in the prophecy of Ezekiel 38 and 39, according to which certain Muslim nations that surround Israel will be led by the leader of a country that will want to attack Israel with a large army. Many peoples will accompany him. Could the next Sukkot happen? Or do the apparent Talmudic references warn that the scene will be set during this Sukkot? And it quotes Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 11. And you will say, I will go up against a defenseless land. I will go against quiet people who dwell confidently. All of them live without walls and have no locks or doors. And it also has a drawing here of a typical Jewish Sukkah. Well, you can see what the thing is about, right? And here... It explains more, and I'm going to read it because I think we can extract something interesting from here. Very interesting, because there are people that have not noticed this detail, and this person here mentions it. What is the purpose of this conflict? Once again, it is not about the destruction of Israel, but a miracle that will happen that will cause Jerusalem to be saved, and all nations will not only recognize that God is still on Israel's side, but will invite the rest of the tribes lost to return to the God of Abraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov. This is what they believe is going to happen. And they quote Ezekiel 39 verses 22 to 23. And from the day forward the house of Israel will know that I am Yahweh their God, and the nations will know that the house of Israel was led captive for their sin, because they rebelled against me, and I hid my face from them, and delivered them into the hands of their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. Finally, what comes after the war of Gog and Magog? It is enough to review the sequence of events of Ezekiel 38 and 39 to discover the theme that chapters 40 to 47 tell us about. Is that what the Tetrads announce? And it quotes Amos 9:11. In that day will I rise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, 
and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. So, the tabernacle, the house of David, what is it referring to? To the temple. How interesting, right? Because it is true. Look at the chapters 38 and 39 of Ezekiel, and then look at the chapters that go afterwards, until practically finishing the book of Ezekiel. What is it about? It is about the Jewish temple. So therefore, will it happen war, Gog and Magog to Israel? Something will happen and the Jewish temple will be rebuilt? We must pay much attention because this is the sequence in the book of Ezekiel that many people still have not even realized it yet. Well, once more, we must keep attentive to the signs of the times. Very attentive and not forget, by any means, the biblical texts. With this said, we are going to see a series of news that have to do precisely with some rabbi Jews that, what do you know, they have to do with what is happening from months now with the war of Russia and Ukraine. They do not have a date, but they are from a few months ago and we will show you quite a few of them so that you can see what beliefs the Jewish have. It says, are the prophecies being fulfilled? In Israel, rabbis start using special clothes to welcome their Messiah, while Russia wages war against Ukraine. So they are waiting for, due to this war, the arrival of their Messiah. This must make us think of the satanic plagiarism of the question. Yes, yes, in the coming of the false Messiah, before Jesus truly comes, because he will deceive the whole world, and you already know where he is going to settle and with whom. You do, right? Well, let's see what it says here. Has Putin just triggered the war of Gog and Magog? Russia has officially waged war against Ukraine. Russian security officials announced that they have successfully attacked Ukraine's air defense systems, neutralizing the infrastructure of Ukrainian air force bases as smoke can be seen billowing from a Ukrainian military airport in Chuguev. As you can see, this news is of just a few months ago. Ukraine also reported that enemy Russian forces have completed seized control of two villages in the country's east as underground subways have been converted into bomb shelters. And while the fear of war has sent many people scrambling for safety, one rabbi is making preparations for the Messiah's imminent arrival, reports Matzav. Rabbi Elia Ber Watzfogel, principal of Yeshiva Seminary, Gedola Zichron Mosh of South Fallsburg, New York, donned formal clothing only worn on Shabbat, on Sabbath, clothing last week when he heard the news of the movement of Russian warships through the Dardanelles River. The response of the rabbi is based on the Zohar whose Kabbalistic teachings reveal that when the Russians will cross the Dardanelles River, it will trigger the start of a series of events before the Messiah comes. The significance of wearing Shabbat clothes to welcome the Messiah was initially proclaimed by the iconic rabbi Tei Vilna Gaon, who said that the Jewish people need to wear Shabbat clothes when the Messiah is about to arrive. And how interesting to see also that the Lord will come in Saturday, as we have already shown. And now it says, 18th century prophecy, Russia sailing through Gallipoli. The Sanhedrin then cited a teaching from Rabbi Elijah ben Solomon Zalman, an 18th century rabbinic sage known as the Vilna Gaon, who singled out Russian aggression as a precursor to the Messiah. After being held as a closely guarded secret for over 200 years, Rabbi Mosh Sternbuch, a great-grandson of the Vilna Gaon, shared the full prophecy publicly for the first time during the holiday of Purim in 2014. The text of Vilna Gaon's prophecy was reported by Rabbi Lazer Brody, an American-born Hasidic rabbi from Ashdod. When you hear that the Russians have captured the city of Crimea, you should know that the times of the Messiah have started, that his steps are being heard, 
the Vilna Gaon told his followers just before his death in 1797. And some years have passed since that of Crimea. And when you hear that the Russians have reached the city of Constantinople, today's Istanbul, you should put on your Shabbat clothes and don't take them off because it means that the Messiah is about to come any minute. Once more we come back to this, Russia in Turkey. The Vilna Gaon's student, Ray Chaim of Voloshin, added, when the ships of the Kingdom of Russia cross the Dardanelles, you should dress in Shabbat clothes because this means the arrival of the Moshiach is close. The Prophet Ezekiel hinted at Russia as being a leader in the Gog and Magog war, even though Russia did not exist in Biblical times. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 2 In this verse, the Hebrew word for chief is Rosh, which clearly hints at Russia. This is curious because there are some people that have this very clear and others that say that it has nothing to do with it. But interestingly enough, it all adds up in the prophecy. Purim is a time when secrets are revealed. The Sanhedrin added, emphasizing that the holiday of Purim will take place this year on March the 16th. Rabbi Elia Ber recently told one of his students, I've been waiting for this moment for 70 years. And now, look what we have here. World War III, Chinese Air Force jets invade Taiwan's airspace. And this has happened just a few months ago and we are still completely immersed in this due to the visit of Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan. Taiwan said on Thursday that at least nine Chinese Air Force jets violated the island's airspace reports. This is from Anadolu Agency. Taiwan's Ministry of Defense released a statement saying that their Air Force scrambled away from the Chinese air fleet. The Air Force aircraft issued radio warnings and air defense missile systems were deployed to monitor the activities, the ministry said. It added, the Chinese fighter jets crossed over into Taiwan's air defense identification zone, the ADIS, which boasts more than 24 million people in the southwestern region. The aerial incursion entering the ADIS came on the heels of Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine on Thursday. And what do you know, only a few months have passed and we are in the same situation but much more pronounced. No, the situation has not calmed down a bit. On the contrary, it is much more stressed. Well, up to here, this little brief report of what the Jews believe on this topic. Gog and Magog, tabernacles, and all of this associated with Russia, Crimea, and what else? All of what you've been seeing until now? Therefore, are things adding up or not? Now, I ask myself, all of those people that say that this has nothing to do with anything, that it is just wars and rumors of wars, do they still believe this if they have seen everything that we have presented until now? Because the truth is that you have to be stiff-necked to maintain a posture that is unmaintainable. But anyway, if someone believes that this is too little to be able to change an opinion, we will still show quite some more. Because this does not finish here. We will see a lot more about the Jews and Gog and Magog. Oh yes, we will see it if it is God's will. And once more, let's prepare ourselves, because this does not finish yet, but the end is coming near. Maranatha 2031. God bless you.